Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. The psalmist says, make a joyful shout to God, all ye earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God how awesome you are. Your works through the generations of your power. Your enemies shall submit themselves to you and all the earth shall worship you and praise and all and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. Come and see the works of the God. He is awesome in doing towards his, the sons of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the river on foot. There we will rejoice in him. He rules by his power forever. His eyes observe the, the nations. Do not let the rebellious exalt themselves. Oh, bless our God, you people, and make the voice of his praise be heard, who keeps our souls among the living and does not allow our feet to be moved. For you are God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid afflictions on our back. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through the water, but you brought us out, the rich to rich fulfillment. I will go into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, which my lips shall have uttered, and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt sacrifices of fat animals, with the sweet aroma and rams, I will offer bulls with goats. Come and hear, all of you who fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me, but certainly God has heard me and he has attended to the voice of my prayers. Blessed be God, who has turned away, who has not turned away our prayer, nor his mercy from me. Thank God for a new day, brand new mercies that he gives us each and every day, and the opportunity to declare his goodness to mankind on earth again. We give him praise, we give him thanks, we glorify him this day for being the God of God, and our God who loves us and cares for us. And so with that, we come before him this morning with lifts of thanksgiving, with lifts of praise and with hearts of prayer. And we lift up our voice to him this morning. And so Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus to thank you for who you are, God all by yourself. Lord, we thank you that you are uh, the all self-sufficient God and you don't need anything or anybody but you chose us Lord to represent you by making us in your image and we are grateful today we come to extol you Lord and we come to give you praise and glory and honor for who you are and for what you've done and for how you have just blessed us with another day and we ask today Lord that as we come that you would just allow us to come before you as we are come before you just as we are, Lord, in need of, of, of cleansing, in need of forgiveness, in need of washing, in need of restoration. And we know, Lord, that you are the God who is merciful, who is gracious, and will literally wash us anew and, and cleanse us by your blood. And so, Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin. And we thank you for your forgiveness today. And Father, we ask in the name of Jesus as we go forth to come before you and to bring before you ourselves and all that we are, we ask that you would use us in this occasion, Lord, this occasion to worship you. Use us, Lord, to your glory and to your praise, that we may be able to tell and proclaim your name throughout the nations. Fathers, in the name of Jesus, have your way in our lives today, and we will give you the praise and the glory for who you are. We thank you for this day, Lord, that represents love. We call it Valentine's Day, Lord, but you you are the you are our heart, and at our heart, there you are. And so, Father, we come just to say we love you. 
We love one another. And Father, we ask that you would continue to, to, to show us creative ways of continuing to share your love with each other. Father, we thank you also that this is a time where we share our history, not only uh, from the biblical perspective, Lord, but also from the perspective of culture and community, how you have brought us, Lord, over all of these years to this place. And so we come to celebrate the African-American History Month, the Black History Month, and uh, to lift up one another and to encourage one another in our living. So Father, this day, as we go forth in your name, we ask that you would lead us and guide us and give us the wisdom just to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We will now have another song selection and we will start our morning worship. Mm -hmm.
amen, amen. Steal away, steal away home. One of those old, old songs that let us know it was time to move. It was time to move and to join the band as they journeyed north. And it's still time to move. And so as we come this morning, we are we want to pause in our service for uh, Black History Month and give some representation of uh, the past, as well as look at the living history that's among us. So Cameron Deer is going to come and he's going to do a presentation on a historical figure. And then we will have a testimony from uh, Sister Bernice Bird of her journey here. So let's listen to Cameron and let's listen to Sister Bird. So Black History Report, automatic elevated, elevator doors invented by Alexander Miles in 1887. The use of elevators in everyday life keeps people from committing to long and grueling climbs up several flights of stairs. However, before the creation of the elevator doors that closed automatically, riding a lift was both complicated and risky. Before automatic doors, people had to manually shove both the shaft and the elevator doors before riding. Forgetting to do so led to multiple accidents as, as people fell down the elevator shaft. When the daughter of African-American inventor Alexander Miles almost fatally fell down the shaft, he took it upon himself to develop a solution. In 1887, he took out a patent for a mechanism that automatically opens doors and close, closes elevator shaft doors, and his designs are largely reflected on the elevators that we use today. I'm Bernice Bird. I'm Bernice B. Bird. And I was born in uh, near Muskogee, Oklahoma. I wasn't born in Muskogee, near uh, Muskogee, Oklahoma, north of Muskogee. And how many siblings do you have? I have two, a sister and a brother. Your dad used to go and do sharecropping? He did sharecropping, uh huh. But you never did? I never had to do anything outside. And after the big flood, we moved somewhere I don't remember. I was quite young, but there was a big flood that we were in. And when my dad and I went back to see him, I had to go with him to see how the house was. And all we could see was the roof of the house. We, we lived with a cousin for a while, and then we moved. And after we moved to Parson, Kansas, my mother became ill. At that time, I was about 13, and I had learned how to cook. And she was in bed for quite a, quite a number of, of days. And I learned how to cook watching her and my grandmother and my one of her sisters. I finished high school, got married, and that didn't work. I moved to California, so I've been in California a little bit over 50 years. My daughter and I moved to California, and I joined New Spirit Baptist Church. I don't know how long ago that was, either. So how did you end up at New Spirit? After so many years, I got married, and my husband brought me out here. Out here where? Santa Ana. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how did you end up at New Spirit? Well, I got, we, we, uh, we ended up at New Spirit, but before New Spirit, I, I had joined Reverend Holland's church. And I had joined Friendship. We were at Friendship. I don't, I don't worry. I, you know what? I don't remember how many years we were there. But when they start to move, uh, uh, then we, we uh, stopped going. And then we joined Reverend Holland's church. And we just sort of like just visit churches. And that was it. Mm -hmm. 
And one day we decided that I said, well, it's time for us to go find us another church. And Remy said, well, I'll stop. I'll stop and say hello to the pastor around the corner. And, and we joined this Sunday and been there ever since. You like the pastor that much? Mm-mm. <laughs> oh, his wife. <laughs> Tell the truth now. You're on recording. You know you I'm fell in love with us. I'm telling the truth. You know you fell in love with us. And no, I fell you. in love with Ashley. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I, I enjoy being there. Mm -hmm. I enjoy being there. I, when I met Raymond, if my my the, the house that 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 I was renting at the time, something got wrong with the water. You know, the water kept dripping out of the faucet, and so my friend's husband didn't know how to do these little jobs, and so he brought Raymond over to to put something in there or whatever it was. I don't remember, and that's how I met Raymond. And New Year's Eve was coming up, and I went to a party, and he was there grinning, of course. We had this, they had this New Year's Eve dinner dance, not dinner dance, New Year's Eve party. And I was chosen to cook the greens. They asked me if I would cook the greens, and I cooked these greens. And and when we when she, she took me to the party, guess who came out the door smiling? That Raymond Bird. And I haven't been able to get rid of him so. <laughs> The love of your life. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. And how many years have you been married? Um, yeah, 32 years now. That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, that's a beautiful story for Valentine's Day. No, you miss him. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, I miss him a lot. Well, thank you for doing this, even though you didn't want to. Still, still don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Cameron, for that... Uh memory of Mr. Miles, Alexander Miles and also Sister Bird for sharing with her, her love story and the meeting of the love of her life, uh, Mr. Raymond Bird. I guess it is historical in nature. So we come also to celebrate, but I'm gonna read for you our announcements for today. And first of all, I'd like to welcome you to our service today. This is our second service in the Black History Month. And we thank the Lord for all the civil rights uh, giants who uh, paved the way for us as a uh, people. And we continue to thank him for how far he has brought us. And uh, today we want to just, to just to reflect upon and give him thanks for what the church has meant to us and how the church has been the center of our community and, and the historical perspective in which the church has played in the life of the black community. Today, we also celebrate the day of love Happy Valentine's Day to one and to all. Today, uh, originated as a church holiday whose name of was Mark. Valentine's or Valentinus. While the meaning and celebration of Valentine's Day have changed, it has remained a special day to shower love on those we hold close. As we remember those we love on earth, let us also remember the ones who loved us so much that he died on the cross for us, for our sins. His name is Jesus. And while we're pausing today to celebrate Valentine's Day, we want to say happy birthday to Kelly Allen. Uh, she may be watching today. I don't know. But uh, happy birthday, Kelly. And uh, we know that you're 16 again. And we celebrate that. Further announcements, uh, virtual prayer meeting and Bible study is every Wednesday at noon and at 7 p.m. On Sunday, uh, 
February 21st, we will have our Sunday school at 9.30 and our virtual worship service at 11 o'clock a.m. Next, uh, we will, this month is uh, church history. I mean, church, uh, his, I say church history, but church anniversary month. And we are celebrating all month long, but next week we're gonna have a program, special program of this celebration uh, next month. The church anniversary will be virtual. So please plan to attend to help us celebrate our church, church's long history. We are grateful to God that our church is still standing despite the COVID-19, praise God. Invite former members and friends and we have that we may, we will be having another guest speaker uh, on uh, our 2021 Bible challenge to read through the entire Bible in a year started on February 1st. The chronological chart, which orders uh, the scriptures reading in the order the events occurred, was was emailed earlier. Sister Barbara Napper, the Christian Education Director, emailed the second chart this past week, which follows the order of the scriptures in the Bible. Please choose the chart you prefer and start your reading. We would like to have more participants uh, this year, so contact Sister Napper with any questions that you may have. Also, Sister Wanda Reynolds is hosting another Zoom training uh, this Tuesday, February 16, uh, 2021 uh, at one o'clock Pacific time. If you went through the training before, you're welcome to get a refresher course. Uh, you can register in advance for this meeting at, and I'm not gonna read this link here, but there's a link that you can, you can read. And I'm sure that's in an email or some contact that you will be sent to you. You will be able to click the link. And after registering, you will receive a confirmation email with login information. The annual Black History Parade has been canceled this year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. There will be a joint COVID-19 Black History Parade virtual program on Zoom on Wednesday, February 24th uh, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Stay tuned for the Zoom information. A word of encouragement today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16. This is how we know that what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. 1 John 3.16a. Recordings of all of our services are available on YouTube and the New Spirit Baptist Church, Santa Ana, California channel. Remember to fast for one meal each week, pray for one hour each week for our church and pray for those on the prayer list. Please also pray for those affected by natural and man-made disasters and the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the current racial and political tensions in our country. So today we are grateful today for the opportunity to continue to worship God and to continue to give him praise. In our celebration of church anniversary, we have a guest today and he's no stranger to any of us. Uh, he's been around and, uh, and he is someone that um, is dear to us and near to us and we give God praise and thanks for him every time he comes he's a blessing and so today for our word for today will be the Reverend Manuel Scott Jr. He will be bringing us the word today and out of our church anniversary and uh, uh, prepare your hearts to receive a word because he's been before the Lord and he has a word that he would like to share with us and we want to receive it in the manner in which the Lord gives it. So prepare your hearts as the choir and our sings. The next voice that you will hear is the Reverend Dr. Manuel Scott Jr., my friend, my buddy, and um, I love him with the love of the Lord and, uh, and pray that God continue to bless he and his family. We now have a song selection.
Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. Lean not unto thy own understanding. In all of thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. It is again our Father and our God that we, your children, saints, and soldiers, come. The most precious, blessed, and awesome name we know, and that is in the name of Jesus. We come in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, a name that is above every name, name at which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We come in his name saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us such a beautiful day today. Thank you for last night's lying down. Thank you for allowing us to rise early this morning and in a world that has gone absolutely insane, we say thank you for clothing us in our right minds. Thank you for this great church, New Spirit Baptist Church. Thank you for each and every one of its glorious members. Thank you for the angel of this house, our dear friend, Pastor Leon Clark. Continue Lord God to bless him, bless his leadership, bless his ministry, bless his lovely family. Now, God, uh, today on this Valentine's Day and special church occasion, we ask that you would just have your way. Have your way. You are welcome into this service. Have your way. We'll give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. We're so mindful of those who are less fortunate than ourselves, particularly those who have contracted the COVID-19 virus, continue to heal them. And then, God, we lift up those who have sadly lost loved ones to the virus. Please God, let them know in a gentle way that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. Have your way today. Forgive us now for all of our sins. And then Heavenly Father, these your servants and most honest request is that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Certainly it is a blessing and a privilege to uh, be on God's program one more time, and I particularly uh, am delighted uh, to participate in the service here at New Spirit Church on this auspicious occasion, and particularly to participate on Valentine's Day Sunday. And in that regard, I say happy Valentine's Day to all of you husbands and wives and all of you uh, significant others to each other. Uh, certainly, it is always a pleasure uh, to be anywhere near uh, Pastor Leon Clark, who I affectionately refer to as Clarky. Amen. And we appreciate him. We've known each other for many, many years. And I thank God for his leadership and the way in which he is uh, responding to his call as God's man of the word and of the people. I want to thank him publicly. My wife sends her greetings to, to uh, you, Pastor, and to First Lady, and to New Spirit. Amen. It's just a joy uh, to be uh, uh, on this program. When Pastor Clark asked me, uh, I uh, immediately said yes, and I was excited about doing it. Uh, again, he's just a wonderful person, and we thank God for his sincerity uh, as, as a pastor. Uh, we thank God for him. Let me make these adjustments here. And praise be to God. We want to get right into God's word for today. And today, for just a few moments, I would that you would prayerfully come with me as we focus our minds upon the theme, upon the subject, call his name Emmanuel. Call his name Emmanuel. And for our scriptural text, I would that you would turn your Bibles to uh, Matthew chapter 1. And we shall begin reading at verse 21, reading down to verse 23. Matthew chapter 1 beginning at verse 21, reading down to verse 23. The first chapter of Matthew's gospel, uh, commencing at verse 21, reading down to verse 23. There we find these familiar and important words recorded. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and they shall bring forth a son, 
and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Call his name Emmanuel. My brothers and my sisters, it strongly occurred to me uh, that uh, it is just a marvelous and tremendous uh, thing for us to realize that one of the best ways to distinguish a Christian from a non-Christian is that the Christian loves calling on the name Jesus. Yes, one of the best ways, one of the most effective ways to distinguish a Christian from a non-Christian is that the Christian loves calling on the name Jesus. And of course, this is precisely why the late Rance Allen used to sing, there's something about the name Jesus, for it is the sweetest name I know. This is precisely why uh, Frederick Whitfield wrote his great hymn, There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Yes, the Christian, unlike the non-Christian, absolutely loves calling on the name Jesus. But now today on this Valentine's Day, on this special uh, church anniversary occasion, I'd like to propose to you yet another name. Yes, I'd like to propose to you, saints, yet another name, not as popular, but a man equally as significant. And this name is the name Emmanuel. Yes, I'd like to propose to you this glorious name, Emmanuel. Brothers and sisters, during this season, learn how to call on the name Emmanuel. And of course, in the original Hebrew, this name Emmanuel literally means God with us or God is with us. Yes, Emmanuel from the original Hebrew literally means God is with us or God with us. Brothers and sisters, during this pandemic season, please do yourself a spiritual and sanctified favor and learn how to call on the name Emmanuel. Well, let me give you some background here. Well, you see, Bethlehem was the birthplace of Emmanuel. The three wise men from the east brought gifts to Emmanuel. Amen. King Herod was uh, neurotically terrified over the baby boy, Emmanuel. Mary the Virgin miraculously gave birth to Emmanuel. History was forever changed from B.C. to A.D. because of Emmanuel. My brothers and my sisters, do yourselves a serious favor this pandemic season and learn how to call on the name Emmanuel. And so, brothers and sisters, when we interface with this tremendous text of ours, we discover that our text is suggesting, in a profound way, several insights concerning this name, Emmanuel. Well, here we go. First of all, the text is suggesting that Emmanuel speaks of a prophecy. Secondly, the text is suggesting that Emmanuel speaks of a companion. And then thirdly, the text is suggesting that Emmanuel speaks of a savior. Yes, according to our glorious text for today, uh, this name Emmanuel speaks of a prophecy, it speaks of a companion, and then it speaks of a savior. Now concerning our first issue, please recognize and realize, saints, amen, that Emmanuel was prophesied. Yes, Emmanuel was prophesied. In other words, he was not accidental. He was not arbitrary. He was not happenstance. He was not serendipitous. No, no. Emmanuel was a prophesy. And saints, for our purposes today, please realize that a prophecy is a divine godly promise that will in time come to pass. Yes, a prophecy is a divine godly promise that will in time come to pass. And my brothers and sisters, New Spirit, you should know that the Bible itself is just littered and loaded and lit up with all kinds of divine prophecies that have in time come to pass. Yes, the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, is just littered and loaded. Uh, it's filled, it floods with all sorts of divine prophecies that have in time come to pass. 
For example, when Jesus prophesied that the temple in Jerusalem would be completely destroyed uh, in 70 AD, it came to pass. When Jesus prophesied that the church would receive power after the coming of the Holy Ghost, it uh, came to pass. When it was prophesied, uh, amen, that in the last days, uh, men and women would become lovers of themselves, it has come to pass. When it was prophesied according to Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 that there would come a time when evil would be called good and good called evil and light called darkness and darkness called light, it has come to pass. You see my brothers and sisters, a prophecy is a divine godly promise that will in time come to pass. And I say to you again that Emmanuel was prophesied. According to verses 22 and 23 of our text, based upon Isaiah 7 and 14. For contextually speaking, Isaiah 7 verse 14 informs us that the prophet Isaiah, a man prophesied to King Ahaz that God would send him a sign, assuring him and Judah that they would be delivered from their enemies. And this very sign would take the form of the virgin born Emmanuel. One biblical scholar has stated that Emmanuel is the prophesied name of the virgin born Christ. Oh, don't you see, dear friends, that Emmanuel was prophesied. Emmanuel was promised. And this glorious promise and prophecy has marvelously come to pass in Jesus Christ. Well, existentially and ontologically, this means for us today, get this now, that whatever the Bible promises believers sooner or later one way or another it will come to pass i said yes whatever the bible amen in the main promises believers sooner or later one way or another it will come to pass but when the bible promises uh, that there's no weapon formed against you that shall prosper it will come to pass when the bible promises that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world it will come to pass pastor clark a amen when the bible promises that you'll make your haters your critics your enemies your footstool it will come to pass when the bible promises a man that weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning it will come to pass. When the Bible promises uh, that even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It will come to pass. It'll come to pass. Emmanuel was prophesied. But then secondly, according to our text, uh, Emmanuel also speaks of a companion. Yes, yes, Emmanuel also speaks of a companion. For we've already forestated that Emmanuel in the Hebrew literally means God is with us or God with us. Yes, and this really means that our God in Jesus Christ will be our constant companion in whatever we may experience. Yes, Emmanuel, amen, our companion, literally means that our God in Jesus Christ will be our constant companion in whatever we may experience. Now, brothers and sisters, just think about that. Just, just think about that, if you would. Just think about it. The King of Kings as your companion. Just think about it, the Lord of Lords as your companion. Just think about it, the Prince of Peace as your companion. Just think about it, the Mighty God as your companion. Just think about it, uh, the author and finisher of our faith as your companion. Just think about it, amen, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the A and the Z, as our companion, as our companion. Yes, our God in Jesus Christ will be our constant companion in whatever we may experience. Oh yes, oh yes. And what this really means, my brothers uh, and my sisters, 
that Emmanuel will be with you in your be confusion, with you in your fear. Emmanuel, Emmanuel will be with you in your doubts. Emmanuel will be with you in all of your concerns. Emmanuel will be with you in your agony. Emmanuel will be with you, amen, uh, in your sorrows. Emmanuel will be with you in your sickness. Emmanuel will be with you, amen, in your depression. Emmanuel will be with you in your despondency. Emmanuel will be with you in your setbacks. Emmanuel will be with you in your disappointments. Emmanuel will be with you in your trials and your tribulations. Oh, yes, he will. Our God in Jesus Christ will be your constant companion in whatever you may experience. For let's see what the Bible says. For John chapter one, verse 14 declares, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus declares in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Jesus declares in Hebrews 13 and 5, I will never leave you nor forsake you. David declares in that magnificent 23rd Psalms, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And then the songwriter wrote, I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. I've felt sense breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. I heard the voice of Jesus telling me still to fight on. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. No, never alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. But then finally, brothers and sisters, our wonderful text for today is suggesting that Emmanuel not only speaks of a prophecy, Emmanuel not only speaks of a companion, but oh glory, Emmanuel speaks of a savior. Yes, Emmanuel speaks of a savior. Now, brothers and sisters, we need to really be clear on our theology here. Emmanuel has come to be with us because Emmanuel has come to save us. Yes, Emmanuel has come to be with us because Emmanuel has come to save us. He has not come to condemn us. He has not come to castigate us. He has not come to punish us. He has not come to harass us. He has not come, amen, 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 to stress us. No, no, Emmanuel has come to be with us because he has come to save us. He has come to save you. He has come to save me. He has come to save your child. He has come to save your grandchild. He has come to save uh, your husband. He has come to save your wife. He has come to save, amen, your best friend. He has come to save your frat brother. He has come to save your sorrow sister. He has come to save your neighbor. He has come to save your coworker. He has come to save your classmate or your colleague. Emmanuel has come to be with us because he has come to save us. Oh, yes, he has. Yes, he has. For Jesus himself declares in Luke 19 and 10, for the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. In verse 21 of our text, it declares for he will save his people from their sins. Romans 8 and 1 finds Paul declaring, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Paul declares in Romans 5 and 8, for God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Paul declares in Romans 10 and 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Emmanuel has come to be with us because Emmanuel has come to save us. He's come to save you and he's come to save me. As I close brothers and sisters in this pandemic season, please do not get confused. Only Jesus can save you. Only Jesus can save your friends. Only Jesus can save your loved ones. Only Jesus, no politician, no president, no governor, no mayor, no city council person, amen. No celebrity, no movie star, no gangster rapper, no athlete, uh, not the Ouija board, not tarot cards, not 
crystals, uh, amen, uh, not the spiritualists, not Madam Sui Sui Fruitcake. Oh, no, 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 uh, not the lottery, not the casino, not the gambling boat, not Las Vegas, or Reno, or Tahoe, or Lofton, Pachanga, Morongo, or San Manuel. No, no, only Jesus can save you. For I heard him clearly say in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Only Jesus can save you. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, he's come to be with us because he has come to save us. Let's be clear, brothers and sisters, in times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. And that rock is Jesus. He is the only one. That rock is Jesus. He is the only one. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips. Holds and grips. Holds and grips. Holds and grips the solid rock. My brothers and sisters, Pastor Clark, New Spirit, all of those of you who are joining us by way of social media on this very special day. Please be aware that it is crucially important that you learn how to call on the name Emmanuel. It is a name that speaks of a prophecy. It is a name that speaks of a companion. And then it is a name that speaks of a savior. God bless you real good. Pastor Clark, we're in your hands. Wherever you are, give God a hand of praise for the Reverend Dr. Mar uh, Dr. Emmanuel Scott Jr. Thank you so much for that word. And we're here today because Emmanuel is with us. And we would like to pause just for a moment to give somebody who has never called on his name for the first time this day to call on the name Emmanuel. God is with us. The one who was prophesied, the one who came and was with us and the one who came to save us. And the scripture tells us, for as many as received him, Emmanuel, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even those who believe on his name. Paul said it's so simple that it confuses most of us. If we would just confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe within our hearts that God has raised us from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The Savior who has come, the one who has prophesied, the one who is with us, the one whose purpose of being here is to save you, is available today. Call his name so that you too can be one that can call upon his name and assured of the answer. We're here today to give you an opportunity to call on the name of Jesus. You may be here, you may say, I've already called on his name. And I've strayed away from the church. I've strayed away from his, his, his will for my life. But I'm here to say to you today, you can call on the name today too. He's still here because he was prophesied to be here with us. And because he is here with us, He's here not only to save you, but he's also here to restore you. So we want to give you an opportunity today to call on the name of Jesus one more time. We thank you for the decision that you've made. And if you have made a decision one way or the other, please just give us a call at 714-542. 7746. I'm 714-541. And let us know about the decision you made because we'd like to assist you and encourage you in the decision that you've made this day. We want to give God a hand of praise for the Reverend Dr. Manuel Scott Jr. 
and uh, the word that he has shared with us today. And with that, we want to give God praise, glory, and honor. Uh, it's, I would like to also invite you to share with us uh, as we uh, give unto the Lord uh, of our tithes and our offering. If you're here and uh, you uh, have a desire to share in our tithes and our offering, you can send them to uh, P.O. Box, New Spirit Baptist Church, P.O. Box 3277, Santa Ana, California, 92703. New Spirit Bo Baptist Church, P.O. Box 3277, Santa Ana, California, 92703. Or you can send them by Zelle or by PayPal. Either way, send it to New Spirit Baptist Church and we will receive it. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for sharing with us in the offerings on an ongoing basis. And those of you who have a desire to give, we thank you in advance. And we pray to God to continue to bless you for your obedience to him. With that said, we're just gonna have a few words of our closing by our speaker of the hour. And uh, we're grateful again for his coming and for his sharing, even through the technical difficulties, he's literally brought us a word today. Why we should call upon the name of Jesus. He was prophesied, he's with us, and he will save us. Dr. Reverend Dr. Manuel Scott Jew. Thank you, Pastor Clark. Can you hear me? We can hear you. You can hear you. All right. Yes. I certainly enjoyed this opportunity and uh, we appreciate you as a friend and as a brother. We thank God for your sincerity as a leader. Uh, you are a credit to the church, to the community and the kingdom. Amen. My only regret is that we don't get together more often. Amen. But soon as uh, COVID lifts, uh, we will uh, certainly do that. Amen. Uh, but again, I thank you and I thank the good people of New Spirit. Uh, praise be to God. I pray that they got the word today. So important. Call on the name Emmanuel. Thank you again, my brother. We love you much and we bless God for you and your efforts. Thank you so very much. You don't have anything to sell today? Uh, yes. Uh <laughs> <laughs> our newest lecture is now available uh entitled vital lessons from the virus vital lessons from the virus what god is saying to us through this covid 19 crisis um we deal with um three well no we deal with 12 uh, major issues the first issue is entitled a season of exposure uh, during this pandemic, everything and everyone are being exposed for who they really are and for who they've always been. We have another issue uh, in this lecture entitled Social Distancing as a Metaphor. We're told that uh, in order for us to remain safe and healthy, we need to keep our distance one from another. Well, I maintain, Pastor Clark, that after the pandemic is over, some folks still need to, need to keep their distance from other folk, amen, if they plan to remain healthy. Another issue in this lecture is entitled, when the masks come off, when the masks come off. So you may acquire this uh, lecture, Vital Lesson from the Virus, either by way of our website, www.manuelscottjr.org, or you can contact New Spirit and they'll get in contact with me. Thank you uh, for this opportunity, uh, Pastor Clark. And blessings to you. With that said, we uh, give God praise and thanks for this day, and we want to close in our benediction. And uh, afterwards, we're going to have a time of fellowship uh, among the saints. Father, again, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the word that have come forth, and we pray, Lord, that it will bless us, that it will literally uh, uh, cause us to call upon your name even more, because you were prophesied to come. You did come. And Lord, that you are with us right now to save us in each and every uh, situation that we find ourselves in. You still provide salvation. You still provide coverage, Lord. You still provide for us, and we are grateful. 
Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be dominion, majesty, power, and dominion from now and forever. And the people of God said, amen. Again, thanks every one of you for worshiping with us today. And we come before you now for a time of fellowship. And I want to say to you on this Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day to everyone. And I want you to know that I love you with the love of the Lord. And there's nothing you can do about it but love somebody else.